OpenAI just dropped a big one, a first-class end-to-end way to build and ship agents. AgentKit consists of the brand new Agent Builder for visual flows, ChatKit for an embeddable chat UI, and the Agent SDK for complete code level control. AgentKit is a real step toward making agent workflows something anyone can assemble and deploy. Let's dive in. Hey, Alex here from Grit AI Studio. In short, AgentKit offers a complete set of tools for developers and enterprises to build, deploy, and optimize agents. Design your multi-step workflow on a visual canvas with Agent Builder or code it with the Agents SDK. Drop the finished workflow into your product using ChatKit, an embeddable chat surface. And when you're ready later on, run evals and tracing to measure and improve. Up until now, visual agent flows have been possible in tools like N8N, Sapier, Langflow, and similar solutions. And although a lot of buzz right now screams OpenAI just killed a million startups or the end of N8N, we're not there yet. But bringing the visual flow inside the OpenAI stack and pairing it with a hosted chat UI means far fewer moving parts, fewer auth and plumbing headaches, and a much lower bar for non-devs to get something useful live. Pair that with the apps inside ChatGPT, which they also dropped yesterday, and we have some exciting opportunities ahead. And for me, that's the big story. And that's what we're really excited about at Grit AI, lowering the bar for more people to actually solve their own problems, also with agents. Truly generative user experiences, and not just chats the way we know them. What we got from OpenAI yesterday is by no means the end solution, but it seems like a proper step in the right direction for allowing enterprises a robust way for more people in the organization to define and use agent flows to solve their problems. We got the agents SDK earlier this year, but that requires developer skills to really make use of. So introducing the visual agent builder is a big step in the right direction. AgentKit is still targeted at developers, but I believe this is a step towards agent flows being built and managed by far more people than just the IT department. Deploying and running these flows still require some technical skills. So it's not yet straightforward, but I would be surprised if we don't see full end-to-end -end deployment options in the near future. As they say in the announcement, we plan to add a standalone workflows API and agent deployment options to ChatGPT soon. Okay, enough talk, let's jump in. Let's start with the agent builder. Think of it like a flowchart where each node is an agent step, tool or control edge, a visual canvas for creating and versioning multi-agent workflows. Similar to what you may know from N8N and the likes. You wire steps, set typed inputs and outputs, and preview runs with real data. When it's working, you publish it, versioned, and it's ready to embed. It's a no-code first design that still ends in deployable code, if you want to. I imagine we'll very soon have promptable workflow generation in there as well. Essentially, text to workflows as a starting point. We'll definitely do more videos around this in the future, so make sure you subscribe to the channel to not miss out. There are some really good starter templates already in here that you can play around with to learn and modify to your use case. We'll do a separate video diving into the details here and how you can connect it to your own knowledge bases and use MCP tools to take your agent flows to the next level. Let's take a closer look at this data enrichment flow. So a workflow is a combination of agents, tools, and control flow logic. A workflow encapsulates all steps and actions involved in handling your tasks or powering your chats. You can click on a node to configure its inputs and outputs. You can also choose what model to use. The start node here is where the user input comes from. These note nodes, they don't really do anything. They're simply for documenting your workflow. The agent node is where we can call our AI models with a prompt, input, and desired output. We can also use tool calling here, like web search or custom MCPs that we've added to our flow. This node here gives a JSON format as output, and this node actually outputs a widget. 
As you build, you can test your workflow by using the preview feature. You can add custom logic and a lot more. You can read all about the available nodes and their configuration options here in the docs. We'll definitely do a deep dive in a future video. Let's just take a quick look at the slightly more advanced workflow. Here we route the messages through some conditional logic. In essence, if the user asks to cancel their subscription, we'll trigger the retention agent. For general questions, we'll trigger the information agent and so on. We can ask for user interaction in the flow with the user approval node. When you're ready to bring your agent to production, you can use ChatKit to embed the agent workflow into your product UI, or you can copy the complete agent SDK code. Okay, so let's take a look at ChatKit. We can use ChatKit's embeddable UI widgets, customizable prompts, tool invocation support, file attachments, and chain of thought visualization to build agents without reinventing the chat UI. It's the embeddable chat front end. As OpenAI puts it, ChatKit makes it really easy to embed chat based agents that feel native to your app or your product. It can be embedded into apps or websites and customized to match your theme or brand. So the pitch here is really targeted at developers. It's designed for developers who want to add advanced conversational intelligence to their apps fast, with minimal setup and no reinventing the wheel. ChatKit delivers a complete production-ready chat interface out of the box. So by making use of rich UI widgets, your agent can show cards, forms, and status updates right inside the chat. And of course, this is not limited to products or apps. Think internal tools and workflows as well. Here's an example from HubSpot where you can see the chat offering interactive components like these cards here. So there are a few really cool demo apps here as well, like this interactive Earth where we can travel around the world interacting with the AI as a game. The concept of generative user interfaces has been around for a while already. We saw it last year with Vercel and their AI SDK and some pretty cool demos. We've built a few of these solutions for clients this year, but ChatKit appears to be a super simple way for anyone really to create widgets and interactive components that can be used in our workflows. The widget builder is prompt based and again lowers the barrier for non-tech people to express ways to interact with our agent workflows. Start from scratch or pick one of the widgets from the gallery and modify it to your needs. You can then take that widget and drop it into your workflow as output in one of the node steps, like we saw earlier. If you do want to code, the SDK gives you agents, tools, handoffs, guardrails, and tracing out of the box in Python and TypeScript. It plugs neatly into the broader platform and traces show you what happened in the run. We got the agents SDK back in March, but yesterday brought some really cool updates to evaluation capabilities and guardrails. But we'll save that for another video. So this is where I get really enthusiastic because agent builder and hosted chat kit means that you can assemble a workflow visually, preview it, click publish, and have something real that you can put in a site, also in your internal tools. Domain experts can polish the conversational flow while development teams build what truly sets your product apart. You can just imagine workflows like HR onboarding that routes questions, fetches policy PDFs, and files an IT ticket if needed without writing a single line of code. Internal research copilot that web searches, summarizes, and cites then escalates to a human if confidence is low. A shop assistant that compares products, collects files, screenshots and receipts, and hands off to support with context. All of those are now practical for non-devs to prototype in the same platform that they'll ship on. So a quick note on safety. Agents are powerful and they can also go off the rails. OpenAI ships guidance and mitigations Think prompt injection defenses, confirmations for sensitive actions, and safe patterns for tool use. 
use them. Add human in the loop for anything sensitive and keep an eye on logs and traces. Okay, so let's do a quick demo. We'll go from zero to a live chat that talks to a workflow. Step one is super simple. Build a workflow in the agent builder. No code required. Open the OpenAI platform and create a new agent builder project. Drop a starter template, connect nodes, set inputs and outputs, tailor it to whatever you want to build. Click preview and run a sample to verify each step. And then finally click publish to create a version and note the workflow ID. That's the ID that we'll give to ChatKit, which will allow it to talk to our workflow. There are in essence two ways to implement ChatKit. We'll focus on the recommended integration in this video. Embed ChatKit in your front end, customize its look and feel, let OpenAI host and scale the backend from Agent Builder. This requires a development server, which will run locally on our computer for this demo. The other more advanced integration involves you running ChatKit on your own infrastructure. There you can use the ChatKit Python SDK and connect to any agentic backend. Use widgets to build the frontend. Follow the steps in the guide or use the starter template to get you going. We can spin up the starter kit on our machine. Just add your OpenAI API key and the workflow ID from the workflow that we just published. And now we can test the same flow that we saw in our preview earlier. But of course here, we could put this inside our own application in our style, apply our look and feel and so on. Behind the scenes here, we simply add OpenAI's ChatKit script and mount the widget on our page. This tiny backend endpoint is largely boilerplate. It just asks OpenAI to start a ChatKit session for that workflow and returns a client secret to the browser. The widget then uses that client secret to open the chat to your workflow. If you need full control like custom authentication and uh, strict data pads, there's an advanced route. Just run a small ChatKit server with the agent SDK and stream widgets and events yourselves. We'll definitely cover that in a later video. So let's talk big picture. OpenAI is converging the pieces, visual building, hosted deployment, and code level escape hatches into a single mental model. For teams, and especially for non-developers, that's huge. You no longer need to reinvent chat UIs, orchestration glue, and templates just to see value. And for developers, you can still drop down to the SDKs when you need it. So this was a quick look I'm genuinely excited about how this lowers the floor for agent workflows. And we'll definitely do more videos once we've had time to properly test it out end to end in real projects. Thanks a lot for watching. Hit that like button and subscribe. Your support means a lot. I'll see you in the next one.